Hi, I'm Sam Mills, and I did the original interface design and graphic support for Academy Scope. And I work with the team of programmers here and our partners at NAS to make this visualization as fun, informative, and easy to use as possible. And one of the ways we accomplished that was by color coding the topics. As you can see in the menu here, each topic has its own color that is the same whether you're in the bar graph, in the network graph, the topic icon, or the menu. And this not only makes the visualization more fun to look at and play with, it also makes it easier to keep track of where you are. Another feature we added that we think um, not only is informative but also makes the, the piece fun to play with is the main topic uh, graph. Uh, each one of these shiny spheres represents a subtopic. And you can move these around, you can bang them into each other. It's, it's fun just to look at and play with, but it's also informative because each of these uh, spheres is sized based on the number of, uh, the number of publications in each subtopic. So if you take a look at this graph, you can easily see that public health and prevention has the most publications inside of it. And when you go inside of a subtopic, you get a temporal graph down here that shows you the number of publications by year from 1995 all the way to present day. So for example, if I go to internet and networking, I can see that 1997 and 2003 had the most publications in it. Now let's click on 1997. It highlights this uh, bar in the graph, and it also enlarges and outlines each of the publications that was uh, published in that year. So it's easy to get an idea of what was published when, just by scrolling through this graph. And when I select a single book, I get a detail here, a nice large cover image. Um, I get the release date, the number of downloads, uh, and a brief synopsis of the text, which I can expand if I want to read more. And this gives me the full abstract. And then we also add a feature down here that uh, allows you to go to related publications. So if I'm on Toward a Safer and More Secure Cyberspace, I can see the related books here in the, in the large network graph. They're also down here, so I can quickly get to a related book. And then if I want to go back to the book I was on, just click this large orange button here that says Return to Previous Book. Another nice feature we added are the zoom buttons. And this allows you to zoom into a particular spot in the graph. And you can use your fingers to move the graph around. And this makes it really easy to find uh, a particular book if you're looking for it, or just to get an idea of the relationships between these books um, in a more detailed way. One feature we added to the visualization that we think uh, will help users is the tutorial panel down here. Now this has four separate panels showing you how to navigate each area of the visualization. Here we have an explanation of uh, automatic mode, which is what you see when you first walk up. This is uh, the publications being downloaded now around the world. And when one is downloaded, you get a little pop-up that shows you the, the number of downloads based on the current one. Oh, we've got one right here. So our goal was to make Academy Scope equally informative and fun to use. We want people who know the subject matter and may have even written some of it uh, to get a lot out of this, to be able to uh, look at these network graphs and, and actually learn something. And we also want the general public to get something out of this. Uh, even people that don't have an interest in these topics or have limited knowledge uh, can find something of interest in here, uh, or at least start to learn w what the popular topics in science are now and how they've evolved over time. Hi, I'm Adam Simpson. I'm one of the developers who worked on the Academy Scope visualization. I worked with one other full-time developer and three part-time developers to make this visualization work. Uh, we used approximately three months to get this up and running from uh, start to the finished product. Um, some of the technologies we use, this is entirely web-based. We're using a JavaScript library called d3.js. D3 stands for Data Driven Documents. It's a really great um, web library to make really nice visualizations um, like we've produced here. We're using Firefox 17.0.1. We found that this was the best browser. It suited all of our needs. We've done extensive testing on all of the browsers. Uh, we found that Google Chrome had the best JavaScript performance, but it had a lot of issues with interactivity and touching. Um, Internet Explorer was also fairly quick with the JavaScript, but it also had uh, 
touch limitations and we had a lot of problems with the dragging. And most other major browsers we tried didn't even support SVG objects yet since it's still a fairly new um, technology. We're running this machine on Windows 8 right now. We found that the improved touch drivers for Windows 8 really helped us get a smoother experience for the touching and dragging effects. And um, we actually noticed that it looked a lot better due to the improved graphics rendering uh, on Windows 8. Here we have a force layout, which is a native D3.js function. Uh, it allows us to take nodes and edges and dynamically insert them into our visualization. As you can see, we kind of have this heartbeat effect going on right now and it contracts and repulses the nodes. We wanted to do this for two reasons. The main reason being we wanted to attract the user to come up and play with the visualization and show them that it could be a lot of fun, but we also wanted to have constant movement to prevent screen burning. When you're in this mode, which is activated after 10 minutes of inactivity, you can touch anywhere on the screen to bring up the actual visualization. If we switch over to interactive mode with the toggle button down here, we can also see our uh, custom bar graph implementation. The bar graph at the bottom is using pure SVG objects. We wanted to use uh, SVG objects and transitions with CSS styling. This allows us to reallocate some of the uh, processor power to other parts of the visualization that need it to increase performance. So over here on the right we have the navigation panel. This is all built off of jQuery. Uh, we, we built our own function and used the swiping, hide, and show functions of jQuery to make this um, work pretty smoothly with uh, just you know touch interaction. At the bottom we have this toggle switch which is also built on jQuery. Um, it's really quick, really easy to use, pretty fluid. Touching one of these top topics will bring up the bubble visualization. Um, the bubble visualization also uses the force layout in D3 uh, minus the actual link constraints. So you just have these bubbles that aren't connected but you can still drag them around. So from here you can either choose to select a category or touch a bubble, and it will take you to the same visualization depending on the network you've chosen. Our ultimate goal here was to create a user interface that was intuitive to any user of any experience level. Uh, we did this by taking hints from uh, smartphone and tablet technologies that allow you to touch on anything you see and interact with any element of any page.